and I was running, 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 barreling down the street and I got away clean by God's grace and mercy. But <laughs> to my shock, horror, surprise and dismay, you would think that after after being exposed like that or not knowing why the prey got away before they could test it, you would think that those people would stay in the shop, but they did not. Those three men came sprinting out of that shop. As I was running down the street, I was not quiet. I was screaming, screaming, screaming. They're trying to rape me. Rape, rape. As soon as I hit outside, I was screaming, rape, rape. They're trying to rape me. Help me. They're trying to rape me. And those three men were coming after me so fast, closing the distance. And when I looked around to see if anyone was coming to help me from these men who were running to attack me, my shock was palpable. Hello, viewers. You're welcome to my channel. Welcome to Agaben TV. What the, the celestial man was actually saying in the dream that he had is about uh, what uh, vision and uh, what God showed him in the dream. That's what he's trying to explain. To and the, there is a lot of vision he had also, and he's does what he's trying to say. He's listening carefully and understand hard. He has many things he says about many uh, African country. What he specifically said about Nigeria is listening. And listen country. with the truth and the understanding that your grandmother and your mother would have raised you with before you went astray and started watching people on American TV and believing everything that they say. This prophecy is grave. It is heavy. And if you are minded to listen, it can be a blessing to you. So this prophecy is to the whole of Africa, but particularly the nation of Nigeria. The dreams that I had, I had several dreams and all of them were of Nigeria. And in between, every time I woke up from the dream, as is his habit, the Lord spoke to me. Until now, I'm sitting here with a fully formed prophetic word, first and foremost, to the men and the women of Nigeria concerning the times and the spiritual realities that will come upon them and also come upon many nations in Africa. All who are minded to listen can listen. So before the vision, she narrated what she was doing and she was like, she was holding some clothes and um, she even thanked God that she was not naked before she entered the vision because if she was naked, she, this and this would have happened to her. And um, as she was trying to put her clothes on a chair, then that was when she entered the trance or the vision that God gave her. So um, let's listen to some of the um, things that happened in this vision. And all I can say is I, I thank God that I never touched a thing on my body to remove it so that I would have ended up in a vulnerable position in there. Because as I held the armful of clothes after having locked myself in and I was about to turn and drop the clothes on the green armchair to now disrobe because some of these things I picked were gowns. Some of the things were things that you need to put on and either zip up on the side or zip it up at the back. So that would have required me to remove some items of clothing. But as I'm holding the clothes and I'm literally bending to drop them on the green armchair, the Holy Spirit, my father and keeper, put a clear as daylight vision in front of me. It was literally like in Disney when the mirror that they're speaking to suddenly just shows an image right in front of me. I would say over the clothes, but in front of my eyes, a vision of these three guys appeared. None of these guys were big men. Okay. They were the kind of lanky guys. Not, you know, that Nigerians can be very hefty, very tall, very large. None of these guys were built like that. They were the more skinny type that look wiry, but they were not built or heavy. And this is what this man said in their own words, in their own language. And as I did in a previous prophecy, I'm going to render it exactly how they said it. So that they, th them who this prophecy is about, them who this prophecy is for can understand it. One person said, the one who was behind the counter, gray t-shirt, and um, he had his hair in a kind of crew cut, low on the side and tall. The one who had greeted me and said, anything you need. He says, do you guys see what I see? Do you see what I see? And then he said, you guys see what 
I see. And he was so excited that as he was speaking like that, he was hitting his hand into the other hands. Do you see what I see? And then the other ones were like, eh, 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 eh. and then they were like, this won't be fine, babe. Fine, fine, babe. And the other one said, yes, no lie. Now be fine, babe. And I won't go try them. Now be fine, body she they get. I won't go try them. Then you guys can try too. And then they used a word in their slang that starts with uh, Y. Talking about my, my rear. They know that slang word. They use the word talking about her yansh. And they were talking about my shape in such a derogatory manner. And then it changed. And they began to go even deeper. They changed to their local language. It was no longer the pigeon, which I could at least pick up one or two things. The voices became so low, murmuring, whispering, but then somebody would laugh out loud and then they continued talking. I cannot remember or register everything that they say, that they said. All that I know is that those men were saying that I was fine. And that they were not willing to leave, to let me leave the shop, especially the one standing behind the counter. They were not willing to let me leave the shop. That one said that I could not go until he had tried me to see if I was sweet. When I saw that vision, I had not even been in the changing room a full minute. And yet these people were discussing how to rape me. When I saw that vision frozen like that. The Holy Spirit spoke to me because those men were discussing about raping me as calmly as if they were saying we have seen a car that we like to buy, but we need to test drive it first. Then the Holy Spirit said to me, there is only one door to this shop, Celestial. And I didn't hesitate. May God help me. Sometimes in dreams, I do something that I think, wow, this is this is really reckless. But what the Lord is showing me is that inside my heart and spirit, there is an absolute and whole commitment to doing what needs to be done in the time that it needs to be done. After this point, um, you heard the whole story of how um, these three men were trying to rape her. And um, God being so good, she managed to escape from them and she was not harmed. Well, um, this sounds like most of the times a story about this. Um, someone's wishing now she's um, actually um, saying now, fast forward, she also explained how she escaped from this man. And let's listen to that. Too. Out of that changing room, as the three of them were around the counter, bent, bent over and talking and snickering and laughing, probably waiting for a moment to make their move. And so I got to slide mostly behind all the racks. And I thank God that this store was a door that pulled out when you entered in. The benefit of that is when you're going out, it pushes out. You could lose precious seconds having to stop and pull a door. It's very easy for somebody to grab you by your hair, grab you by the back of your clothing. But when you're in full tilt escape mode running and you have both arms pushed out and extended, extended, that glass door just went flying open with me behind it. And I was running, 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 barreling down the street. And I got away clean by God's grace and mercy. But to my shock, horror, surprise and dismay, you would think that after after being exposed like that or not knowing why the prey got away before they could test it, you would think that those people would stay in the shop, but they did not. Those three men came sprinting out of that shop as i was running down the street i was not quiet i was screaming 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 they're trying to rape me rape rape as soon as i hit outside i was screaming rape rape they're trying to rape me help me they're trying to rape me and those three men were coming after me so fast closing the distance and when I looked around to see if anyone was coming to help me from these men who were running to attack me, my shock was palpable because I'm thinking in public, in broad daylight, 
you're running me down and the intent on these men's faces were like when people are hunting when the, when you go hunting for whatever there's a look of intense concentration on the face of the hunter and that's why i always tell people you cannot play with satan because satan is a tried and a tested hunter he always gets his prey don't play with sin don't play with compromise don't play with lies don't play with false prophets don't play with pastors don't play with your body don't play with the grace of god don't play with god himself don't play christianity is not a playground because satan is a trained hunter and he hates to lose now after this whole escape thing um she was like she ran and she saw people and um she was calling for people to help her no one minded or even gave her attention and she was shocked because um how can people try to do this to her in broad daylight so as she continued to run um the story continues uh, as she he, she claimed she met some Fulani people, you know, those people dressed all in white and they were sewing clothes and a whole lot of other things. So she saw them in the room, entered the room together with them and um, the Fulani people actually came to lock the door behind her. So the three men couldn't enter. And as the story goes on, she finally managed to escape from that room and um, the Fulani room too. So she... God took her out of the chance so or the vision that she was having, and um, this was the story. And the Lord woke me up suddenly. Suddenly. It was like I was yanked out of that dream. And I'm telling you, I sat bolt upright in that dream. You know how you sit upright and you're checking yourself, but at the same time you're looking around because the dream is so real. And I was surprised to find out that it was only a dream. And this is what the Heavenly Father Women in Africa, it doesn't matter if your earthly father is alive. It doesn't matter if your earthly father was good to you or not. You have a heavenly father, but the problem is that a lot of you have departed from him because you like the ways of the street. You like the ways of the world. You like the things that you see reflected on the TVs. You like what you see on the cell phone. You look at these pointless girls that aren't going anywhere in life. They collect expensive handbags and they build special rooms for the handbags and they arrange the handbags by color and they have YouTube channels with 2 million followers and something in you, something in you thinks that that's something to look up to. The world is so twisted now and it is taught nothing but corrupted values. And so women are looking at people who are able to acquire material goods and admiring them. They no longer look at their mothers who were able to keep a good home and give them support that they needed to complete their education. Tell them that you, my child, are going to be something. The women of the past are nothing to look to now. They're only to be pitied. You look at your grandmother and you say, oh, my grandfather was cheating and she still stayed. She's sleepy. She's a useless woman. But she knew the devastation that would come to her children if she were to throw them off the way modern women throw them off. A lot of you, you are very unjust to your mothers and your grandmothers. You disdain them and you despise them because they're older now and they don't look like Kim fake man Kardashian. You don't know the value of the sacrifices that they took so that you don't have to walk in their shoes. The silence that they bore whether you respect it or not, is so that you would not come from a broken home. When women come from a broken home, the potential to be raped by men later in the future is very much higher. Why? Because when you did not have a dad in there to recognize and learn what a male presence is like, when you step outside, the first fool that shows the skin of his teeth to you, you like him. And then he's taking from you something by force. He's abusing you. These modern men, they abuse in ingenious ways that the older men did not abuse. The older men were known from, for a slap, but these ones will gaslight you and empty your bank account and tell you that it's your fault that you are.